Hello everyone, welcome to Baiju's exam prep. I hope all of you are doing fabulous. Uh, you should actually, because today we have with us our dearest Subhashini Singh, who has qualified CLAT and is now able to grab a national university, one of the finest law colleges in the country. I always knew she could do it. And now we have her here to, you know, we would be speaking with her, discuss the journey that she went through, uski sari ki sari strategies, preparations, sari uski secret recipe, wo sab kuch patane wali hai aaj. To hum sab discuss karenge, achche se samjhenge ki hum kis tarah se uski story se inspire ho sakte hai. All of you can gather a lot from her story, her journey. So with us, we have Subhashini Singh. How are you, Subhashini? I'm really happy to talk to you. I'm I'm actually to talk to you as well. I'm doing great. What about you? I'm doing great too. So uh, before we start discussing your journey, let us, you know, introduce a little bit, introduce you a little bit. Can you tell a bit about yourself, your background, what motivated you to pursue a career in law? Okay, so I come from a pretty normal Indian family and we live in Gujarat here. So uh, back in 10th, I think uh, that was when we started uh, discussing about what to do with our lives. So me and my father were very involved in this process. So we did evaluate myself on various subjects, my interests and aptitudes, and then the various careers available uh, pertaining to my interests. And then after that, I think uh, we found law to be something that uh, interested me and at the same time fit my aptitude in the way that I could do better in that. So yeah, we, we thought maybe you should give it a try. That's well, how I came up to give it a try. It was actually a very good decision. <laughs> you yeah. did well, yeah. of course, and I'm sure you're going to do better in future. So, okay. So Subhashini, after you decided that you want to pursue a career in law, you must have, you know, gone through a lot of, you must have researched what mentoring should I choose. I want to know what led you to, choose Baiju's exam prep for your preparation? Were there, you know, specific features of the platform that appealed to you? Uh, yes, definitely. I, I think in the start, uh, when we were finding out various uh, coaching institutes, there were a lot of uh, institutions where they just gave six hours of continuous classes and then uh, it was getting boring and it will take a toll on my health, I'd get a headache. So what I really wanted, my learning happens through practice. So what I really wanted was uh, a platform where I can get more of the chin, less of the theory part and more where I can practice more. So I found that, you know, we have a lot of mocks, we have a lot of sexual tests. So uh, that, you know, made me uh, get into my juice. And then, of course, it, was, it did end up being a good decision because I found out that the mocks really were very similar to, you know, the actual paper, uh, CLAT 2023 I attempted. And it was pretty similar to that. So I think that turned out to be a good decision. Apart from that, uh, we have specific topic tests as well. Like there are sectionals and then there are topics as well. So after you're done with a certain class, you want to do certain questions, you you already have a bank of questions that are available. So that really worked out for me because I practice best through questions. That's uh, that's actually very good. It's one of a uh, very unique feature of Baiju's exactly the app, actually the, the topic test. So I've uh, I've seen students benefiting from that aspect you they go to a class they attend a class and after you're done with the class especially when legal you need to revise it and how do you revise it you cannot just keep watching the session right so exactly. flat is all about practice so the best thing is just to practice from that very topic yes so yes that is a feature i'm actually very proud of <laughs> anyhow so uh how did the entire setup of Baiju's exam prep contribute to your preparation journey can you describe how you integrated the resources to your study routine yes uh as i said like uh my coach other coaching institutes i had to go to the places and then it was really not convenient so i think the online uh mode of communication of learning over here really was beneficial we could just tune in whenever uh it was convenient and i did not have to make any you know a lot of uh commutations or any transportation it was very uh, easy it was very you know adjustable so that worked out for me apart from that uh having classes almost always almost daily really set me into a routine i'm like the kind of person who would not do anything as long as i'm not in a routine 
so being in a routine really helped me out i you know got to set my priorities then the interactions in the class as well we have the live chat option so like i have people messaging and we i get to know like the kind of people the kind of preparation the kind of competition we are against so i think that really you know helped me just set myself into the mode of you know just doing it wanting to do prep class so yes. yeah i think it helped me that right so it actually works you know uh the the major thing that i keep telling my students is that you know when you're starting a preparation especially when you're starting a little early or as we call it it is on time there is no such thing as too early there is definitely a thing as too late so when students start their preparation well within time an year before or maybe an year and a half before they have a lot of time they have schools they have priorities different priorities and they believe that you know we can do everything and we can maybe defer our studies being in the momentum of preparation consistently throughout the period of you know till the day you are facing the exam is very very important the moment you you know break this consistency everything unravels you just cannot afford to do it i am really glad that the you know we could help you be in a routine that's very nice so okay uh, let's come to your strategies when you were preparing you must have had you you're still in school you're doing your 12th you would have boards next year so how did you manage you know there were students asking me the latest to the 2025 students they are always asking me ma'am how did our seniors manage did they not fail their preliminary exams their pre boards and all how did they submit their vivas and all so please uh, guide your juniors as how you did it first of all that makes me feel really good like we call the senior here yeah I think uh, for me personally, I've always been the kind of student who gets very good marks. I got like ninety six in standard tenth. So uh, obviously, I had uh, my parents, like my family and myself. We had pretty good expectations out of myself. But then, uh, actually, for the better part of the year, even in twelfth, for like uh, till for the first six months, uh, I used to try to balance everything out. I'm doing studies. I'm doing extracurricular. I'm doing trying to fit in class. but that was a time where and i hadn't really understood the momentum the really the depth of clat and you know how important it is for me mm-hmm. so i think then i was just trying to juggle between things but then the later part of the when the actual uh, anxiety struck in and uh, when we had to uh, pace up our preparation mm-hmm. i think that is the time to decide your priorities CLAT is uh, very convenient in that way. We have our exams in December, and then we have three months to prepare prepare for boards as well. Exactly. So I think that something uh, came into a problem for me. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was just one where you have to take a decision that I need to keep my extracurricular and my academics to the back burner right now. I need to focus on CLAT, and it's just three months, six months, and it's just six months of hard work. After that, I'll be free to do whatever I want. So that's a, a very crucial decision. I do understand. and it was not very easy either but it it takes a little you know courage to just make that decision yeah. and get into the pace and everything starts later exactly yeah. absolutely correct i mean if you want to do something great in life you need to make harsh dis- decisions life is not going to be easy all the time so definitely very good uh, so uh, within the you know setup that we provided to you within the environment that by just exam prep provided to you what strategies or techniques did you find most effective to you know to be able to do what you did uh i think like uh for clat every section is different it requires a different way of preparing so i think this class is that as well uh, provided us a, with a very you know personalized way in to go with a certain section like for legal i uh, you have been telling us you know don't take risks uh, do anything out of you know ego ki mujhe to ye solve karti rehna hai so i think that works for legal but when it comes for current affairs we need to take a little bit risk you know if it's 70% correct you should go for it mm-hmm. so that it was the kind of guidance we had we had our current affairs sir telling us ki ha take risk and then we had the legal teacher telling us you don't take risk here mm-hmm. so i think we did get a very personalized uh, guidance from the fact as well that really helped me uh, understand every section and importance and how to approach it mm-hmm. apart from that uh, i think 
the kind of questions that uh, came into practice when I came across them, I did understand that, you know, uh, certain questions are to be this way, certain can be taken a risk for certain, you have to leave. So I think that with a lot of practice and a little bit guidance from teachers as well. So I think that worked out. Right. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, another thing that I would uh, want to know is that you took CLAD this year. It was different than the, you know, the previous year questions or the previous year patterns that consortium has laid before us in a way that there was a lot of logical RCs in the paper, even in GK for that matter, right? Even in GK, you had RC. So, uh, you know, I have always seen, especially in CLAT and ALIT, they are very good in throwing curveballs. Like they surprise you at that very moment, right? And when I was going through the legal section, I came to know, I, I, it seemed like a very easy session section. Students were overwhelmed. Oh my God, legal is so easy. But when I started solving it, turn, turns out that it wasn't as easy. It was actually a little tricky. It must, there must have been questions that, you know, that got students stuck and ended up wasting their time. So you must have had these kind of experiences even when you were solving mocks, etc. How did you deal with them while you were practicing? And how did you deal with that real time thing when you took the exam? Uh, I think uh, during mocks, I uh... The very fact that it's uh, really that it's just a simulation, you have to uh, make decisions wisely, but that does not affect your overall, you know, credibility. It doesn't affect the way that I am. Hmm. So if I come to a particularly hard mock or any particular section is very difficult, uh, it's in that moment that you realize it's okay, it's fine. If it's a little hard, let's figure out, out our way. Uh, we can eliminate smart guesses, good elimination, and then a lot of times, especially for Google, the information lies in the paragraph itself. Exactly. It may be one line, one word, or some, uh, you know, innuendo, but it always lies in the pa paragraph. Itself. So I think solving questions for legal works that way. You just have to read the passage very thoroughly. As for English and logical, I think uh, elimination works best uh, for logical, of course, to go to. Elimination works. And yeah. But then if particularly hard questions, you just have to let it go. If it's hard for me, it's hard for everybody. Exactly. So I think that works out as well. Absolutely. As for the actual paper, we just found out that, you know, it's really easy. It was really easy this time. So it was a situation wherein you cannot leave a lot of questions because you know that a lot of other people would be doing all of them. In that case, you know, it's just taking a little bit of risk and just doing it up. The legal section, I think, uh, even I got lucky wherein I found the questions easy, good enough. And uh, the credit goes to you, actually. During the last times of the crash course and all, we did all the family law and everything. Right. And the extra information that we found there was something that I read during the paper. So that worked out, I think, uh, the reading the passage carefully, reading the questions carefully, and that worked out good. Every mock it works out. Yes, every lead, but no matter how difficult or no matter how easy, you know, whatever kind of legal reasoning is there in the paper, there's only one way to solve it. And the way is to read the passage, like really read the passage, not just read, read between the lines, read, read it thoroughly. You would be able to solve every question. You know, even when I'm okay. creating questions, even when I create questions and later on when I solve them, sometimes even I get stuck. And that is the strategy that I follow. Just read the passage. The answer is right there. It's good that you remembered it. I have been emphasizing this strategy for the whole year. There, I don't know how many listened, but you surely did. I'm really happy. <laughs> okay, so um, now there are various sections. We have five sections. Oh, how did you like start? When you started your preparation, were there, you know, your did you already have strengths? Like, okay, this is the section that I'm good at already. So I would start with this. So I want to know how did you really start? Which section did you pick up first? And what section did you find the most difficult? Which one was the easiest? Also, how did you manage quants? And what advice do you give to your juniors who are actually, you know, uh, apprehending or choosing way before ki quant to hum chodi denge, we're going to quit it. Uh, I think for quants, I'll start with quants actually. 
uh, do not leave fonts. It's like 12 marks, but then it's the most essential part. Adding up 12 marks to your score would, you know, just um your exactly. ranking from the paper. Hundred or nine hundred or ninety-nine ki but beach may come second to two hazard but exactly, exactly. Every mark, every zero point two five markers. So leaving corn was actually uh, never the situation. I think uh, when I discussed things with my father as well, even he, uh, you know, emphasized on the point that maths or quant is just practice. Yeah, exactly. The only reason you're not able to do it right now is because you're out of practice and then you still have time. Take out every, uh, like one hour every day, practice stuff. Mm -hmm. And the best thing about quants for flat is it's very basic. You have... I think Ankur sir has uh, taught us in a very easy way that there are three basic things, ratio, proportions, and percentages and averages. You have to be a master at that. After that, you can choose your, your pick, you know, do your strengths, topics as well. So that comes with practice. Any quick mathematics comes, comes with practice only. But yeah, I, I did understand the importance of from the very start. And uh, paying attention to it is definitely, you know, you have to do that. Yeah, no yeah. matter what and i think the uh strategies and you know the little tips and tricks shortcuts that uh, we got to know in the, in the youtube sessions as well that really helped because i'm doing full-on calculations but then our teacher is last to sub cancel out of that so i think those little tips and tricks here and there do help a lot as for other sections uh i think i am much of a reader i do like reading a lot of fictional books so English was always my strength, wherein, you know, no matter the graph, I, the one thing I got lucky with was comprehension was not my problem. Hmm. I did get to understand the passage fairly well. So I think mine always remained uh, English, but then the reason we do choose CLAT is legal. And uh, fortunately, legal passages are, you know, pretty comprehensive. So legal and English was something that I was always comfortable with. And uh, my go-to subjects, when I'm like, I need to practice, I'll just go to those two subjects and I'll start. But then later on, it was, yeah, I do did realize that uh, the other subjects are equally important, especially current affairs. Exactly. Uh, I'm not much of a current affairs person who'd be very on their toes with the, you know, general happenings. But then during the last later part of the year, I think around August, I did realize that, you know, it's not going to work like this. So I buckled up. Uh, you know, we had the recorded lectures of the previous monthly classes and then we had the Flat Ignite magazine. Yes. So it was the process of just integrating all those resources into a book of notes where you're just revising every day. You're going through, you're practicing questions. We have the YouTube sessions and all. So I think that works out. Yeah. That's actually a very good way of describing it. Your strategy was, in fact, very good. I mean, from the beginning, you understood the importance of quant. Most of the students are so scared of it that they're willing to leave an entire section without realizing how fatal it can be. But you didn't do it and it paid off. I'm really happy. Okay, so uh, how about the support system that, you know, was offered to you at Baiju's exam prep? Can you... Share how your mentors or peer support within the Baiju's community contributed to your success? I think uh, like three months before the exam, everybody was buckled up. They're like full of anxiety. They're trying to find out ways to just increase their support. I think at that time, uh, having a support system, having people who are experienced and you can talk to them, you can ask questions, that is very crucial. And I think we did get it in the form of, you know, we had those groups, the toppers batch. And even I, uh, the availability of teachers personally, I could message you, I could message Alpha ma'am whenever I wanted. That was really uh, convenient. If I had some doubts, if there was some problem, I just message you directly. I'd get my, uh, you know, replies very soon. Hmm. So that worked out really well. And uh, apart from academic as well, the, the whole, uh, you know, dealing with the anxiety and uh, trying to, you know, Soothe ourselves out. That worked out in the way that uh, I could message a teacher and they'd be like, oh, calm down. This is going to be fine. Let's uh, go through this. Where did you go wrong? Where did you not go wrong? And uh, that helps. Yeah. As for the students, uh, I remember we have this uh, normal batch as well. And then we have the toppers batch as well, wherein there's just a lot of people who are just so enthusiastic about the subject, you know? 
and could message somebody personally and be like, yeah, this is resources, this is questions I practice from here, you should do it too. So I think that was the very, you know, prompt in helping others and then, yeah, taking up resources. So it was just a whole environment of mentors and peers just, you know, hustling up to uh, get a rank for CLAT. And that was a really simulating environment where I could work very well. I'm glad we could provide that to you. Okay, so is there a, you know, a specific advice or a support that made a significant difference in your preparation? I think, uh, as I said, every section for CLAT is different. So consistently in sessions, we realized that the teachers at the end of the day are saying the same list of five advice, but you just have to listen to it and apply it. Like for you, you told us, you know, how to approach the questions, what questions should be done, what should be left. And applying that to mocks really helped me out in that I used to do, you know, those complicated questions wherein I have to judge the answer. I'm the judge and you know, I have to give the verdict and all that. And then later on, I realized that you asked us to not do those questions. Leaving them definitely did improve my accuracy. So similarly in other sects, uh, you know, Abhimanyu sir with his uh, ne negative marking strategy, when he just tells us, mark, take one option, mark all of it for GK at least. Then tips and tricks like that work. And uh, anyway, KD sir, uh, all he says every time is logical reasoning is all about elimination. Eliminate, eliminate, eliminate. It works out. And that actually does work out. So when you do mocks and all and you do questions, you realize that elimination works for logical. So yeah, sim like personalized uh, tips and tricks and methods of solving the question from every teacher was very essential to, you know, cracking class because it's just not about knowledge. It's about applying your brains in a way that you can just go past the question easily. Exactly. Okay, so uh, now that we are discussing this, you know, how you utilize the strategies, I also want to know how you utilize the mocks. Like, uh, how did you utilize Baiju's mock tests and the practice sessions in your preparation strategy? strategy? Uh, what role did they play in your success? And also, when did you exactly start solving mocks? Like, I see students starting with mocks and then not being able to score as well, and then, you know, getting discouraged. So when exactly did you start with the actual practice of either sectional tests or topic tests or mocks for that matter? Uh, I think mocks have just a very high importance in preparation for CLAT. I remember Alpha ma'am saying that mocks isn't, you know, a test of your preparation. It is a part of your preparation. You have to do it with the flow. So I think it has a very uh, big importance in disruption. As for when to start, I think uh, even at the start, my father and I were discussing the way things are going. And he said to me that the first three months, you have to go attend every class. You need to understand what the theoretical part is, understand the basics of how to approach questions. And then after that, we'll put it into practice. If we don't know anything, what are you even doing in mocks? I think the first three months, I didn't do any mocks. Uh, January, February, March. Uh, I just went to classes every day. I made notes and all. I had the basics. And then I started giving mocks in April. Mm -hmm. Then not very frequently. They were still new at that time. So I gave probably one or two mocks per month. That was very less actually. But yeah, and then uh, slowly I did increase my pace. Uh, as I said, towards the later end of the year, after August, uh, the, you know, the frequency of mocks these i used to give like two every week so yeah it gradually increases as the preparation increases and uh, if i use mocks specifically it was helpful in the sense that after i'm done mock i have a detailed analysis already like uh, a lot of mentors tell us yeah giving the mock is important but then analyzing it is also important exactly. and uh, the analysis already there like what went wrong where you went wrong accuracy is correct and everything really helped me in the sense that i didn't have to do a lot of manner but uh, apart from that i knew how to approach my result now to analyze more so that was i think a plus point for by juice mocks the mm -hmm. same goes for sectional tests a detailed analysis of what my strong topics are what my weak topics are 
that helps. So yeah, overall that was a very good approach to yeah. Mocks. Right. So you did not uh, start very early, but you did not start late. So do you think you could have like you know increased the ac frequency of taking mocks a little more, like in the beginning itself? You only used to take one or two a month. Did you? If you look back, do you believe that if you had taken more, maybe your score would have been higher? I th it uh, wasn't specifically mocks. It's like practicing. So you do it in the form of mocks. You do it in the form of sessions. As soon as you get into the pace of practicing, it gets better. You see the kind of questions there are. So you have, you know, you're trying to find information related to those questions only. I think, yeah, getting into the pace of uh, practicing mocks or sectionals early on is a good practice. I mean, uh, I didn't uh, start like, it wasn't very late when I did realize that, you know, I need to give start giving mocks. So it did work out for me. But yeah, I, I do think I should have given a few more mocks towards the start. But yeah, not specifically mocks. I should have practiced get caught into the pace of practicing more. Right. Exactly. So like Alpa ma'am, you quoted Alpa ma'am, she was on the point. She's absolutely correct when she says that it is a part of your preparation. You know, when it comes to com competition, a competitive exam, you prepare and you practice simultaneously. You cannot segregate them. You know, let's just prepare first and then practice later. It doesn't work like that. The moment you get into the preparation mode, you need to start practicing. And that is the reason why we have all those topic tests. I'm glad you were able to utilize them. Uh, so if, you know, one more thing to uh, just analyze, if we are to analyze the past, if you go back in time, is there anything that you would do differently to your preparation? Is there a, is there a strategy maybe that you would add to your preparation or a, you know, or a routine maybe that you would, want to follow if you go to past and tell your former self ki ye mat karna aur isko aise karna. is there something that you would do i think that goes for current affairs okay. like uh, like i said i'm not a big fan of current affairs mm -hmm. but uh, like this year's paper worked out because it was very uh, theoretical in nature but not every time mm -hmm. uh, for the mocks and all uh, if i had got into the practice of making notes and practicing questions early on, that would have been, you know, a, a little boost in my cut air scores. Like rather than starting later on in the year, I think I should have, uh, you know, did the notes and did the questions from the start as well. That was one thing I think uh, could have made my preparation easy. Yeah, that cut air it always happens no matter how successful you become there are always things you would want to do differently anyhow you cannot do them but it's fun thinking about it mm -hmm. <laughs> at least other people can take notes from it so okay. is there an advice that you would give to your juniors who are preparing for CLAT with Baiju's exam prep and who are doing it on their own uh, I think CLAT is not a test of knowledge. It is a test of how quickly you can understand the stuff, how quickly you can tie it to the questions. So one thing I really emphasize on is comprehension, reading comprehension. You should be in the habit of reading fast and reading quickly and understanding it as well. So mm -hmm. if, if a person is uh, preparing for 25 from now only, they're pretty early on, they still have time. Mm -hmm. Apart from like for a preparation, we can go for reading you know, books, novels, fiction, whatever works for them. But getting into the practice of reading, understanding words, and yeah, that works out. That helps in uh, comprehension in the English section, but then the whole paper, you understand it well. That at least doesn't pose a challenge. Upon that, yes, of course, uh, newspapers and consistent classes, all of that is uh, given. You should do that. Of course. So now that you have successfully qualified CLAC, uh, I would, I'm really interested to know about your future goals in the field of law. Do you want to become a lawyer or are there other fields that you're looking forward to? Uh, I think before I do like the proper preparation for law, uh, just, you know, normal uh, discussions in the family and people suggested that I should go for PCSJ as in for the judge thingy. So that was something that, you know, enlightened. I was like, okay, wow, being a judge, you know giving judgment all. 
Mm-hmm. So I started out by that, having uh, the goal to become a judge. Mm-hmm. But uh, understanding the intricacies, that's like a long way. I still have a lot to do. So yeah, I was, I'm leaning towards, you know, understanding corporate law and that sort of experience. So yeah, we'll see how stuff goes. I think I'll learn better in a law college and the available opportunities. There. Yeah, well, in a law college, you're only going to learn the theory. That's what it is. You know, the CLAT is exactly like what happens thereafter. Like I said, no, the preparation and the practice simultaneously in the preparation, even after when you are in the you know graduation zone you still have to practice you cannot just you cannot leave it all to theory this is my advice to you uh, so if you are to become a lawyer or a judge do not wait for it till the end start doing something about it right so if you are looking forward to a corporate career law college is not going to teach you that much you would have to manage a lot of things on your own no matter what no matter how great law college is ye sari cheeze practice se hi aati hain aapko khud hi karni padti hain lekin i'm sure ki you would be able to do it right so subhashini so it was amazing to, to speak with you i felt really happy and i am very happy that you have qualified and i hope you have a great career ahead from on behalf of the entire team of byjus i wish you all the best for your future your success and everything that you start thank you very much ma'am